Okay, look at this. Fantastic crown trifari. So, if you are wondering what Bakelite looks like, feels like, smells like, just go to your local antique store just to get a feel of like what the coloring looks like. I see a cinnabar piece right in here. You see that little like carved bangle that's hidden right there, that red one. Oh my God. This is like the jewelry jar. Mother load. <laughs> $12 per lot firm. Oh my word, what in the world? <gasps> There's probably some really good stuff here. Let's talk about this. You guys know what this is, just by handling it. I could kind of tell what it was um, just behind the glass, but this is Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, AKA Lollyworks, and we are at the antique store. I am a full-time stay-at-home mom, part-time reseller, and I'm actually here mainly because I forgot something or they forgot to pack it in the box. I think it's that Mur Murano Lacework Cup, which maybe by the um, end of this video, I will share with you guys some things that I researched about it, which was really interesting. I thought it wasn't Murano. And then I did some more research and it possibly actually might be Murano. So I'll share that with you. I'm going to go get the cup. I'm also bringing you guys in to the antique store so you guys can do a little shopping with me. I actually have my big camera with a big lens today instead of just my phone. So we'll see how it goes. It's going to be a little bit more awkward than normal. Um, but yeah, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I am um, a reseller of mostly jewelry, some shoes, accessories, and some hard goods. So uh, I usually find things at antique stores and flip them for profit. So if that interests you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure to like this video and let's go ahead inside. Okay, so we are in like one of my favorite booths. It's like a clothing booth here. And I found this pillow. It's only $4. And it has all this beautiful needlework needlework on this like mustard yellow back. And there is a hole. But my mom fixes holes. So we're going to grab that. Um, it's for my own living room. It will match perfectly. And then I'm running across these cowgirl boots right here. They're a smaller size. So I don't think they're for women but my daughter i just bought a cowgirl hat for her she's only five she might like have to grow into these but not they're not too far off she's like a size one in kids these are 15 dollars. i think i need to grab these for her she will love these um because now we have chickens she thinks she's a farmer cowgirl so I'll grab these as well and this is new these are, ooh, silk scarves in this basket here. So let's see what the price is. So $2.50. Okay, we might be grabbing some scarves. So if you're looking at vintage scarves, feel for the high quality fabric. Look on the bottom for signatures. So this one says Van Goya or something. Look for interesting prints like equestrian um, this obviously looks really neat. And then look for hand rolled edges. So this one is hand rolled here, hand sewn. I think I'm going to get this. I don't know who the maker is, but all those things, these are at least, a this is at least a $15 scarf um, without even looking it up. So I'll grab that. All right. What is this one? This one is like a coat of arms with a man. So France Halls. This one doesn't feel like silk. Let's see. Scarf, vintage scarf, 250. Oh, it says pure silk. Interesting. Might be like a thicker, maybe? Let's see. Designed exclusively for KLM, Holland. All right, this is something I'm going to look into a little bit more. And we have this. This one 
looks kind of Avon. Let's see. This one says, oh, S. S. N. Kent, S. M. Kent, something like that. Also, two fifty. I'll grab that one. Wow, I think we're gonna be scoring today on the scarves. Okay, so I love these purses where you can change out the outside. So they have these little buttons across the top, right here, and you can change out the cover. There's these like wooden handles. This one is twelve fifty. So not really worth picking up for resale, but I just love these. These are so stinking cute. And if I find them at Goodwill or something, I probably would pick them up. Look at this big tray. I'm like in love with this. $15. There's a peacock on it. And look at all these colors. Very India, if I had to guess. Let's see, no mark on the back, but. It is huge. I kind of want to get it. If there was like a bracelet made out of this, I would get it. I'm kind of wearing something that matches right now. Um, this is awesome. I love this. Huge. This is not something to pick up for resale, but because it's so big. All right, so we are here in like one of my favorite jewelry cases. I wanted to show you guys this right here. Do you see that little swag dangle key um, charm brooch? I wanted to point this one out because if I had that on, I would probably list it as like a Chatelaine style brooch right there. So um, if you guys don't know what a Chatelaine is, it's something that women wore, like Edwardian women wore on their hip, like nurses and things like that with scissors and writing pads, pens, things like that. Um, this is not, this doesn't have all those things, but it's like when I see those dangles and chains, I think of like Chatelaine style um, as like a keyword. All right, so I really like these clip-ons still. Those are really pretty. We have a fairy rhinestone brooch. Ooh, those have some really nice molded glass in them right there. It's hard to point and look. <laughs> this bow is glorious. It's articulated. Do you guys see that? How it's like coming over the edge. There's just some really, really pretty stuff in here. All right, I think I saw a book chain. So, where did I see it? I was talking to the lady who owns this booth, telling her what a book chain was, and I thought that I had just seen one in here. Oh my gosh, look at this Rivoli silver brooch thing. All right, let's see. If you guys see anything that you would have picked up, let me know. I think I want to open this face to or this case, that looks Austria to me, right here. I love Austria. Ooh, that one, I still love this one with the little rhinestones at the tips. All right, where did we see the book chain that I thought was a book chain? Oh, <gasps> look at this needle, needlework thing right here, right there. Where's my finger? Oh, right there. Right there. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Okay, look at this. Fantastic crown trifari clasp. It's multi-strand multi crown trifari. It's $20. I'm kind of considering it though because it is just really, really nice. And yeah, so this is like 50s, 60s, but the gold tone is just in really great shape. So right there, it's marked Crown Trifari. Yeah. This one, let's see. This one says Monet maybe? And which one is this? I'm not sure. Um, it looks like we have a Joan Rivers. 
There's the tag right here, Joan Rivers. What are you attached to? Okay, attached to a long pendant here. It's really pretty on the back. What are you, $20? Wait, clam? Clam family long, okay, am I looking at the wrong thing? What is it? Oh. All right, so it looks like we have the Kayam family. I believe that is um, a branch off of the Leah Sophia, a little bit higher end. Um, what else? That looks like a little Avon that is attached to this long pendant. I'm not sure if this pendant went on that chain. I don't think so. Hmm. Ooh, these ones. These are fun. Big statement bird with the carved inlaid mother of pearl. Ooh, look at these crystals. I love them. They're so delicate. Briolette cut crystals. They are on a chain that says... So this chain does say um, Givenchy, G Givenchy, she has it for $9. This is the newer Givenchy where I, I just feel like the newer stuff tends to fade a lot quicker than like the vintage. Ooh, this is very pretty. It's on like a leather cord. That's really pretty. Okay, so here in this jewelry pile, I did find this sodalite pendant, and this is making me think that it is sterling. It's not marked, but look at this toggle. I just feel that it is. This is $7, you guys, and look at this carved sodalite here. Okay, it's not cooperating here. There we go. Carved sodalite with the flower. I think that's going to be a good risk um, to take. Ooh, look at this. This is in the, the Mexican modernist style. I think we're going to grab this because some of the Mexican modernist pieces are genuine sterling and genuine um, semi-precious gemstones. So this might be citrine here. <laughs> Okay, so um, I really love being able to touch a lot of this jewelry. Um, it's easier to look at um, rather than going behind the glass for the boots. But like, for instance, this one right here, I noticed that it is older. It has the hook clasp. There's nothing marked on the clasp, but I really, really like this like matte silver findings at each end. This is higher quality because it is on a chain. So these are the metal balls hooked on the chain. It's really fun. Ooh, here's some gold stone. Oh, this one fell into this basket. I actually picked up some baskets like this from the bins for my mom's cottage. So fun. Okay, so let's take a closer peek at this gold stone with a magnet clasp have this clasp here with some glass beads. I'm just feeling these, ooh, these feel like really nice glass. They're like striped. Then there's a spring ring clasp. It's really pretty. Okay, so $18 tiger striped. Ooh, and then I like looking for these big box clasp. The big ornate box clasp. This looks like a West Germany piece. Oop. Don't want to break it. <laughs> Let's see if it says on the back. Yes, it says West Germany right there. It's really fun blue and green colors. All right, so this is a $10 necklace. I think I will grab that. All right, here's my bowl <laughs> of jewelry. 
Oh, I love this so much. It's the articulated cloisonne enamel fish. I have like seven of these all on one necklace. They're all just hanging there. Love that. This kind of looks like confetti or end of day glass. glass. This looks like a longer, older piece. That is really nice. She has it marked at 20. else we can find. Ooh, this one's pretty. Like a blue faceted crystal. It has a box clasp here. Um, looking for any marks. I'm not sure, but this is glass, so I will look at that. Art glass. This one looks like a listener with the thermoset panels. Ooh, another one with the fun findings. Let's see, are you marked? This one might just be Japan or Hong Kong. But yeah, glass and acrylic, so I'll look into that one as well. All right, so this is Lori's booth, and if I had a booth, this is like what I would love. It's like her own little room of goodness. So she has a lot of really nice things in here. Let's go over towards the Bakelite. So if you are wondering what Bakelite looks like, feels like, smells like, just go to your local antique store just to get a feel of like what the coloring looks like. I see a cinnabar piece right in here. You see that little like carved bangle that's hidden right there, that red one. Otherwise I see like egg yolk, spinach bakelite, uh, apple juice bakelite, things like that. And I've heard that 35% of people cannot smell the formaldehyde in bakelite and that might be me, honestly. So I do the simichrome test. Ooh, look at all these. I love how they're displayed in this shadow box. She has like really, cute clothes really really feminine so she has this little room off to the side so this antique store is in an old school building so that's why it's huge and i'm wondering if this was like an office space when you walked into the school so yeah here's a little um dresser set that's probably celluloid hair receivers Okay, so let's see. I love this little grape faux pearl one right here. There's some cameos. This one looks very Art Nouveau right here. Silver right here. That one looks very Art Nouveau. Let's see. Ooh, look at this. Oh, that one's enamel and amethyst glass. I think I might need to look at that one right there. That one's so pretty. That almost looks like a coro, duo, coro duet where it comes apart. I'm gonna have to look at that one as well. We'll see. Ooh, look at this tassel abalone or mother of pearl. Beautiful thing going on. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, here's another amethyst glass sash buckle brooch pin. Ooh, a bug. I do collect bug brooches. All right, I definitely want to look at that one though. That one's fantastic. All right, so this is so pretty. I am so in love with these India etched vases and pieces. This one is 32, but oh my gosh, it is so lovely i have or maybe it's like turkish or something um but i love those all right here we are in a basement room hi <laughs> um, i'm looking for jewelry we have some here all right so again if you're looking for starting jewelry look for like jewelry jars in a booth that doesn't normally sell jewelry Okay, we have some hand-painted eggs. I collect painted eggs. All right, those are egg, or those are salt and pepper shakers. Okay. 
Ooh, this looks like a nice purse. I like the shape of it. That's nice. Maybe 70s-ish. Okay, what can we find? I don't come in the basement too often because I end up getting so much stuff before I even get to the basement that I'm kind of done. But look at this. This is really pretty. Is this Fenton with the ruffling and the cranberry glass? Let's see, Fenton, cranberry, pinched ruffle top, melon shape, 65. That is fantastic. Oh, I have this one here at my house. This pink one, I collect that, or at least when I started collecting, I was really drawn to that look. I know it's not that valuable, but I'm still drawn to that look. I have like a whole collection. Oh, Blanco, okay. So this is good because I'm like learning the feel of higher quality things. I'm able to see how that looks, how the bases look. Blanco is a brand to look out for. Oh, it says Blanco right there. Okay, this one is art glass with a rose, really pretty. These are, I see, carnival glass, swirl glass face. There's some purses. What are these? Brown leopard hand blown purse. That's fun. Okay, I'm kind of in love <laughs> with this little bowl again. It's an India bowl with enamel solid brass. Really pretty. Love that. More glass. Ooh, we have brooches. We found something. <laughs> Let's see. So anything stand out? I mean, this kind of looks modernist. We have a little peacock says art deco multicolored stone peacock not sure if it's art deco i think that's a stretch this one's fun very dimensional faux pearl spray judy lee but not marked okay um yeah not too much here that one's kind of cool though very abstract let's see what are you vintage geometric abstract black enamel Roach. I wouldn't be surprised if that was signed. I don't see that it is signed, so we'll pass on that one. Okay, so next room here, looking for anything that's dangling down. And let me tell you, um, it is harder to use this camera in public because it is a lot more noticeable to people. Um, in public, so I think people are like, when they see me with the camera, they're like, walk away. All right, we found some jewelry here. Yay. All right, let's see if anything jumps out at us. Clip-on earrings. We have some bracelets. Belt buckles. What is this? Is this a belt buckle? Yeah, it looks like one of those hook belt buckles. Cufflinks. We'll take a look at cufflinks. I've been selling cufflinks lately. Ooh, here's a really cute, here's a really cute set right here. Here's like earrings and a brooch. That's really pretty. Um, all right, I'm gonna have to take a look. Oh, here's a coin necklace. Coin jewelry does pretty well. Let's see, it might be broken maybe? I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, yeah, so I think this is the booth that I found like genuine 14 karat gold and another stone that I haven't quite figured out yet, but I think it was very cheap for 14 karat gold clasp. So I think maybe I will find um, some kind of treasure here. So I'm kind of in love with these little MCM enamel plates right here. They remind me of the MCM 
enamel jewelry. I think they're very artistic. 15. Oh, look at this. A leaf, teardrop leaf. Love that. Cherry blossoms. Those are so neat. Okay, this is interesting and new. They have all these pieces with like paper and bags. I see some Monet, new old stock, sorted earrings, have some clip ons, more clip ons, multi strand for six. Let's see what this looks like. Um, it seems to be broken. What else? Clip earrings. There might be actually some fun things in here. This is a newer booth, so I haven't checked it out yet. So I think, oh, what's this? This is a fun pin. This is like an agate and a fleur de lis. Fun. Maybe like 1970s ish. There's Simone teardrops, 250. Yeah, I think I can look through these to see if I can find any hidden gems. Okay, I think this is going to be the last jewelry place that I look at before I go check out. But make sure to stay tuned for the recap when this is all done. Ooh, these are pretty. These are some glass crystal, it feels like. Ooh, there's gold posts. So I might have to look at those posts a little closer to see if it says something like gold filled these might be a possibility they look very high-end designer very lovely all right put those to the side Ooh, we have some guilloche enamel this is an a and oh maybe it's an n it says an n 450. sometimes this booth has sterling things that are not marked what does this say mexico this might be a Taxco little pendant with mother of pearl. Let's see, five dollars. Maybe, maybe might be worth it. Um, I found these little cha-cha earrings. These are amazing. Oh my god. This is like the jewelry jar mother load. <laughs> Twelve dollars per lot firm. Oh my word! what in the world <gasps> there's probably some really good stuff here because i've bought a lot of jewelry from his booth and then he kind of stopped and now we have jewelry again so i'm gonna put back i'm sorry put these up to the register bring these up to the register i should say and then uh see if i want to buy any of these goodies oh my gosh Okay, you guys, we are back with the um, the haul for the shopping trip. And I have my little guy here. He's my little cloisonné snail that I got in the mail. And he's going to hang out with us today, right? You guys might have seen him in the last video. He is just so stinking adorable. Okay, so let's get into what I bought. And let's see. Let's just talk about this one here. You guys might not be able to see it the best just because of how the camera is set up, but I will do my best to show you. All right, so this was a scarf and of course it's silk. You can just feel and it's very flowy. There's the hand rolled edges and all I saw was this corner edge right here and I was like, oh, does it say Van Goya? No. I have to I looked at it the second time. I was like, that says Van Gogh. <laughs> Over on this side, it says the drawbridge right here. So obviously this is like a painting by Van Gogh called the drawbridge. This might have been sold at like the Metropolitan Museum of Arts or another museum. I can't find anything like it online. So that means I could probably price it where I want to price it. So silk, art piece, hand-rolled hems, vintage, loveliness. Um, I could probably list this for like $49.99. And I could imagine it selling for that much. And I paid about $2.50. So that one was a score. Okay, we have this one. 
that I might have this exact one, honestly. I looked back um, at some of my, or I was delisting, relisting, I think, maybe, and I came across the S S M Kent or S N Kent. This, I believe, is by Avon. So, <laughs> it is. There's the tag right there. So it says acetate water repellent Avon. So this would be a really great headscarf, right? Really pretty pinks, yellows. I, um, I don't know, maybe I will get like 15 for this. So I paid, I think, 250 again. Okay, then we have this one. Did we see anything? So it just says 100% silk made in Japan. I don't think it has any um, maker or t other tag on it, but it is a very lovely bright blue. Are these poppies or hibiscus? Because that one in the middle looks like a hibiscus and that one looks kind of like a poppy, but very beautiful nonetheless. Okay, we have these two scarves right here. Oh no, this is just one. So let's see. What does it say? It says Amsterdam. So this one says Pure Silk KLM. And then Theo Lamers, Theo Lamers BV Almir Holland. So is this Holland scarf? So it looks like there's crest and people and paintings and yeah, it's kind of giving me the Versace like royal opulent vibe, but this is like a travel souvenir type scarf. I don't think it's silk. Did we say, does it say, oh yeah, it does say pure silk, you guys. I am like really confused because it's not like that flowy thing. You can test silk if you get like a strand of the fabric and and you can do like a burn test and a smell test. My mom used to do that. She is a seamstress. Uh, like she makes like wedding <laughs> wedding clothes and all of that kind of stuff. So she, I kind of grew up with that. So I've seen her burning lots of fabric. <laughs> Probably won't do that for that, but um, yeah. All right, so we have a bunch of goodies here. All right, this might not be vintage, but it was still a good price, especially considering it came from the antique store. Um, don't mind my finger, I burn myself. Yes, <laughs> that's what is on my finger. Okay, so this is Fossil Genuine Leather, and it was only $5. I love selling Fossil belts, especially the wallets and some purses. Um, I really like wallets because they're high quality and they fit in like that little um, easy to list, easy to ship, easy to store, like small type item thing that I have going on. And of course, wallets are very easy to ship. This just has a really cute flower tooled leather look at the top. And it's just like fossil just feels so nice. And honestly, if I do go and buy a purse, it's probably going to be fossil. I think I have like at least five leather fossil purses myself. Um, that's probably my go-to. So yeah, fossil is my go-to. I probably can get like 20, 25 for that wallet. All right, let's grab some jewelry goodness out. And I might still have like what I paid for some of these pieces <clears throat> on here. Okay, so this one can see this is the sodalite pendant necklace that we saw I did come home and test the metal and it did test as sterling silver so for how much did I pay <clears throat> seven dollars yay I can probably list this for like 50 and this is just lovely I love how it's a sodalite teardrop pendant and it's carved. So if you want to know the difference between sodalite and lapis lazuli, lapis lazuli has the gold flakes and sodalite oftentimes has more of the white 
um, inside. So yeah, so this is this ladybug type thing is probably also sterling, and that might be um, also indicative of the maker, something about ladybugs or something. But even without knowing the maker, I'm sure I can make at least some good money for that one. All right, next we have this piece that was four. Was it? Oh, where did that one come from? <laughs> Anyways, this one was four, and I can just tell um, that it does look like a sterling silver piece. Let's take off the price, and then we see a lot of writing going on, which is like a good sign. So, see all the little like. There's like three different places that it has writing. So this is, it says like 925 for sure, right there in the middle. And then there's other marks that I can't really make out right now. But this is enamel. It's not stones. It's a red enamel and like a cobalt blue filigree cross. What I can do is I can Google Lens it to see if anything comes up. Or I can just try my best to read the marks, but for $4 for a sterling silver uh, cross pendant, I can't go wrong really. <laughs> That's beautiful. We have this unusual piece. Isn't this fun? So I have some, something going on. Okay, so this one was 10, but I got 25% off of her things. I'll show you more. I did get a lot of pieces from her booth, Lori's booth. She gave me 25% off that day. So this was $7.50 and it has the abalone pieces. This kind of, and tell me if I'm wrong, but this kind of gives me like that natural Michael Michaud, Michaud um, look like with that natural gold tone thing going on. But like it's that color and it's very like branchy. I don't know. That's just kind of what it's giving me. But it has this fun tassel movement. Like if you wore this, it, it gives you really, really good movement. So that is really nice. I have no idea who this is, but I love it. All right, we have this one. This is some Monet New Old Stock. <laughs> Clip-on earrings, there we go. Suggested retail, $26. Might just take that whole thing off. There's the Monet on the back of the clip-ons. Can't go wrong, really. I've been doing super well with Monet lately. I feel like Monet is on the up. Crown Trefari is on the up lately, for me at least. So I tend to pick it up. All right, so let's talk about... Let's see. Let's talk about this. Do you guys know what this is? Just by handling it. I could kind of tell what it was um, just behind the glass. But this is one of those Coro Duet brooches. Which is awesome because Coro du Duet brooches are really hot right now. They will sell um, at least $100 for most pieces. Some pieces with the animals can be 300, 400 um, sold. And what's cool about the Coro duet, duet is that you can take these off, right? So it looks like this one was 32 and then I got 25% off. Um, I'm expecting to list this for about at least 100. Um, but yeah, you take those off and you can wear these as, I think, dress clips. So that's what's really interesting and fun with these. These are very like Art Deco style. Put those back on. And yeah, this is just super, super lovely and collectible right now. And it doesn't say, let's see, it says patent pending. It, I don't see where it says Coro Duet, but it is a Coro Duet. So there's that one. 
we have this lovely, lovely piece. Can you guys guess what this is <laughs> without looking? I honestly, that's how I like to learn is when I'm watching a jewelry unboxing, I like, or even when um, Janice from Slow Happy Vintage, she'll send me pictures of her haul and I'm like, oh, is it this, this, and this? Because it helps like keep my brain fresh, keep my brain learning. So I like doing that. But if you guys... Um, might not know the style. I'll just tell you that this is a Florenza pin. This was $18, 25% off. It is glorious. Florenza stuff is just so romantic and opulent. Very like, I don't know. I've been to um, Versailles, Par in, not Versailles, Paris, <laughs> Versailles, France. And that like, it's just very, very royal, opulent, over-the-top filigree scroll work. So, I don't know, I can see why people are really still drawn to that, like, Art Nouveau, romantic, Victorian style. It, like, really doesn't go away as far as people loving to collect pieces like that. So, Florenza is very much known for having very romantic pieces and is very collectible. It is marked Florenza, right? there. So yes. Okay. We have, oh, this one was not a part of my haul. What is going on here? I think I tested this and it did not test as sterling silver. So this came in something, but it says 925 and it did not test as sterling. So be careful for your Jewelry, especially modern jewelry, that is marked 925, and it is not. Okay, so this one's not signed, but I got this for myself because I have been collecting jewelry with the long Marquis Navette stones, and this one has the long... I'm just really, really, really drawn to those long stones. I think the Juliana pieces use them a lot, and they call them the Navettes. That's the shape of the stone. And ever since then, I've been kind of like obsessed with that look. And so now I have my own little collection. But I think a lot of people would really like this anyway. These have the little rhinestones at the tips of the flowers. This is like a mint green, uh, maybe 1950s or 60s um, brooch in really excellent condition. We have, you might be wondering, Rachel, why did you get this? I still really love these like hook multi-strand, I think most of the time they're Hong Kong or Japan or West Germany um, necklaces. A lot of time, most of the time they're acrylic. Sometimes they're glass mixed with acrylic. Sometimes they're glass. This one says Hong Kong. So maybe 1950s for this one. And I think that it lays really nice like uh, on the bust. And you guys have seen that I do regularly sell necklaces like this. They're not like super hot, super popular, but there is a collector's market for it. And they're just like, I think that I don't have white. <laughs> I've never sold a white, a plain white one before. And I think you could wear white with a lot of different uh, other pieces layered. I'm sorry, not layered, but combined like earrings and such. So yeah, these are like cut acrylic. See how fun this swirl is. So it's kind of faceted. Just nice. And that one was $3 with 25% off. We have this one. This one I did not get a percentage off. I don't know where this take came from. This one was 10. Okay. I did really well. I think I sold my other blue and green West Germany piece for $39, $40 ish, maybe. Um, and this one has the same kind of colors. I believe this is like 1960s coloring. And again, this one does say West Germany right there on the back. This is a fancy box clasp, acrylic, like briolette, lucite beads. And like the color is just that the color in West Germany in the box clasp, that's what makes it. And it's just fantastic. Very like fun retro. 
Okay, so we have this piece here. I'm not sure what I paid for it because I don't have the tag, I don't think. Um, but I think it's similar to a Monet piece. It has the white enameling over the gold tone chain. Really 1960s into 1970s. That's when the white enamel was very popular. And it's not marked, but I would not be surprised if this was Monet. And it's just really fun with the big long tassel. I like that it's see-through as well. You can see the color of your outfit through it. Lovely. Okay, we have this one. You guys know that I've been really, really loving the purple amethyst glass sash buckles lately. I've sold several. Um, they're not like like flying out the door, but who can resist? This is just so glorious. So what is this? This one was 38 with 25% off and it is just stunning. It almost looks like it has a laurel like leaf pattern right here. Two of the amethyst glass. So I think this is around 1910, 19 teens or 1920s. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's when these like sash buckles were uh, around. Let me know in the comments, but yeah. All right, we have these cha-cha and these, are these glass? Huh. Okay, so these are some really fun clip-ons. And honestly, I feel like every time, or almost every time lately, that I have some fun cha-cha clip-on earrings that I show in a haul, um, someone will purchase them right after. Because, um, yeah, they're just really, really fun. And, I mean, what else can I say? They're, they're clear, fun cha-cha uh, clip-on earrings. You guys might be eyeing this, right? This is fantastic. Look at, it has the purple amethyst glass again, and then it has some enamel detail flowers on this brooch. And again, not in perfect condition. You can see some enamel loss, but this is just a fantastic piece. And this is probably going to go to a collector. Um, let's check the back. So no marks or anything on the back. But let's see, what did I pay? So 45, so this one was a uh, paying up piece, but it is just so, so lovely. I believe this is Czechoslovakian. When I've, I have a book that talks a little bit about Czechoslovakian jewelry and a lot about Czechoslovakian plates and vases and things like that. They have a lot of enamel work in those, in that book. So that's why I'm thinking that this is like a Czech made piece. Okay, this one says Coro. This one also was 25% off. This one says Coro, but it's actually Coral Craft, which is a little bit like more desirable right now in the market. Right there it says Coral Craft. This I would probably list for at least 35. I think I paid $6 with 25% off. It is an open swirl ribbon circle brooch with the paved rhinestones in there. So yeah, Coral Craft is doing pretty well right now. All right, this one might have been a mistake. This was a like risk that I took. So what did I pay? $18. Yeah. I might make my money back on this. Um, so I've been picking up a lot of the mid-century modern sterling silver jewelry that have that the same look, the same setting. This did not test as sterling. And what does it say? Yeah, so there's the Park Lane right there, which Park Lane is not a bad vintage costume brand. I was just wanting to test to see if this might have been on a Park Lane chain, but I, it, it probably did come together because this did not um, test as sterling. It has a nice look. It looks like a citrine faceted stone, but I probably will get like, I don't know, 25, $30, unless it's like something really collectible. <laughs> we'll see, but yeah. So that one was that. 
Here is another coral duet. This one was 32 with 25% off. It's missing a couple rhinestones and there's some like darkening to one right there, but you know what? That doesn't like this is so collectible. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys how collectible this is, right? So you can take these pieces off as I showed you before. Okay, like so. Um, well, <laughs> let's see. Do I have my scissors? Where did I put my scissors? Anyways, let, let me just show you. This is called a skeleton, a Coro Duet skeleton. It's kind of just tied on here. I sold just a skeleton. I did not realize what I had. I All I saw was that it said Coro Duet and I thought maybe it was an abstract dog at the time. And then the more I researched it, I was like, oh, there's supposed to be stuff that goes on it. Um, it still sold and it sold very fast and I might have even underpriced it because I didn't know what it was. So now I've, I know that it is highly collectible, even the little skeleton parts. So that was interesting. So, you know, it, it is missing some rhinestones. I could, you know, repair it and say that it's been repaired or just sell it as is and still make a good profit on this. Very art deco and lovely. All right, last two pieces here. Uh, this one was six. I did take a chance on it. Still no idea. These are just really, really pretty and high quality. Um, I did try testing it. Didn't test as anything. This feels like really, it just feels really high quality. You know when you have <laughs> jewelry in your hands where you're like, why is it not marked? That's the feeling I get from these. Still researching. I have no idea. Okay, then we have these. Oh, these are so pretty. This says $3 for Labradorite. Um, I don't think this is Labradorite. I think this is Moonstone. <laughs> so do you see the white with the glow, that flash on the inside? Lovely. Um, I actually think that the, the Moonstone is actually pretty popular right now. I should probably test these. I don't think I tested them because this looks like a brass hook. It doesn't look sterling. But now I'm looking at like the ends and I'm like, hmm, maybe, maybe the ends were sterling. So I will have to test those later. But yeah, that is my haul. Let me know. What was your favorite piece? Uh, did you guys learn anything? <laughs> Let me know how you guys are doing down in the comments. Comments really are great because A, they help like my channel get boosted a little bit because it shows activity. B, I really love hearing from you guys, interacting with you guys. I try to read and comment on every single comment that you guys send me. And then, yeah, so leave me a comment down below. And did I already say subscribe and like? Okay, do that now. And as always, make sure you're out there thrifting so you guys can live generously. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.